Fullerton College football has been alive and well since way back in 1916. Coach Albert Stuhlke defeated Santa Barbara High School 7-6 for the Hornets' first ever win. There were only 158 all-time victories from 1916 to 1961, a span of 45 seasons. That's when a young coach from Montana took over the reins. Since 1961, Hal Sherbeck has won 233 games at Fullerton College, the most coaching wins in community college history. He's also accumulated 16 conference titles and three national championships. The 1990 season, Sherbeck's 30th year as Hornets head coach, featured an inexperienced squad, a new offensive game plan, and a schedule that would make any coaching staff crazy. With a new offensive game plan, which would turn out the most productive offensive unit as far as total yardage in Fullerton College history, and a defense that kept the Hornets close in every ball game, Fullerton College would surprise people in 1990. And this is their story, the story of the 1990 Fullerton College Hornets. Cerritos College invaded Fullerton District Stadium with a 1-0 record, and winners of three of the past five encounters with the Hornets. Facing a team the caliber of Cerritos in your season opener was no easy task, especially with a team introducing a new offense. But from the first play from scrimmage in 1990, Eric Robinson and Terrence Green would hook up on a 33-yard pass play. Before Brian Williams would score the season's first touchdown on a 14-yard run. The Hornet defense would get into the act as Toby Hal sacks Falcon quarterback Pete Montera. Eric Robinson would then hook up with tight end Rob Coons for the Hornets' second TD of 1990, a 32-yard pass play. Freshman running back Coy Collins would later score from five yards out to give the Hornets a 21-13 advantage. Three key defensive plays allowed the Hornets to hold on. First, a sack by Scott Clausen and Steve Griggs. Then a fumble caused by the combined hits of Matt Shackelford and Tim Milterson enabled Toby Howell to pluck the ball from the air and stop a Cerritos drive at the two. Then Shackelford's game-clinching interception against his old Cerritos pals enabled the Hornets to win the first game of 1990, 21-13. Fullerton traveled to San Diego to take on the San Diego Mesa College Olympians. The Hornets bolted to a 37-0 lead in the second quarter and cruised to the easy route in San Diego. The offense again sparkled to the tune of 446 yards in total offense, while the defense was just as impressive, holding San Diego Mesa to 191 yards in total offense. Game number three featured the undefeated Pasadena City College Lancers, and the Lancers turned out to be a concern for quarterback Eric Robinson. What do you have to do in this ball game? What does the ball club have to do? I think the, co the team has to, you know, just keep their calm, keep their composure, and just let things click and um, not rush things. Um, keep our tempers and cool, and we should do all right. With Pasadena City College building leads of 9 to nothing and 15 to 7, it took the Hornets a while to get started, but started they did in the second quarter. The Hornets got on the board on a 44-yard touchdown pass from Eric Robinson to Terrence Green, who was wide open downfield. The Hornets would score their second touchdown of the evening 
on a 31-yard pass play from Eric Robinson to Brian Williams with seven seconds left in the first half. The Hornets would tie the ball game at 15-15 on a two-point conversion from Eric Robinson to Rob Coons. The Hornets would then take their first lead of the ball game at 22-15 when Tim Ilterson stepped in front of a pass and returned it 18 yards for a touchdown. Matt Shackelford and Toby Howell combined to make a big defensive play when they caused a Pasadena fumble and Ward Van Pelt was there for the fumble recovery. Running back Brian Williams would score his second touchdown of the evening and give the Hornets a 29-15 advantage. Lancer fullback Ostell Miles would not give up, however, as he scores on a 77-yard run up the middle and Pasadena ties the ball game at 29-29. Brian Williams would then score his third touchdown in the evening on a three-yard run to give the Hornets a 36-29 advantage. Fullerton College defensive lineman Danny Garcia would then deflect a third down pass play and end a Pasadena threat. Then on the game's final play, Matt Shackelford breaks up. A touchdown try by Pasadena in the end zone and the Hornets come away with a 36-29 win, their third victory of the 1990 season. Fourth game of the 1990 season found Fullerton College at Mount San Antonio College. Gaining 370 yards on the ground, Fullerton easily disposed of Mount Sack as Eric Robinson had a second 100 yard plus game in the rushing department. Game number five featured the El Camino College Warriors, four and one on the year and ranked eighth in the nation, coming to Fullerton to face the four and oh Hornets, ranked number two in the nation. You could write forever about this game, one of the best football comebacks in the history of Fullerton College. It appeared late in the fourth quarter that the nation's second-ranked team would fall to El Camino, especially after Tony LaCosta scored on a five-yard run to give El Camino a 24-9 lead with 13 minutes remaining in the contest. Mark Helmer's call says it all. And I think I just heard the refrigerator door close. 
The butter was getting hard and the eggs were cooling, especially after quarterback Eric Robinson appeared to go down with a serious ankle injury. Add the fact that the offense had been struggling anyway and the Hornets were in deep, deep trouble. But then the comeback. We'll let Mark Helmer and Scott Galletti describe the action. And Eric Robinson coming back into the ball game. Whoa, right off the cart and back into the ball game. Wow. And he ran out there too. He sure did. 6.05 left. Robinson with split blacks, two wide outs to the near side of the field. Goes to Mountain and there's the hole. Johnny Mountain to the two. First and goal at the three, give him credit for 13 yards on the play. The Hornets give it to the second man, Brian Williams, at the goal line, touchdown! Big down here. Hornets want the ball. The ball falls out of the hands of the quarterback, picked up by the Hornets, and there's going to be a touchdown! And now they are discussing it. I think what they're going to say is that he couldn't run it back in. The rule in college football for 1990 is that if the ball crosses the line of scrimmage, you can run it back, like in the National Football League. If you fumble it behind the line of scrimmage, you can't advance it. But the main thing is the ball fell out of the hands of Rod Harvey at 427, and the Hornets are still alive. Watch this. It looks like the old Statue of Liberty. Oops. It just popped out of his hands. And the Hornet player picked it up and ran it into the end zone. But as you said, Mark, it was on the wrong side of the line of scrimmage. But the Hornets in golden opportunity right here. And they may have an opportunity to get it back again after this. First and 10, first and goal at the seven. Give it to Williams at the seven, touchdown. Brian Williams, a six yard touchdown play. And the Hornets are going for it. We'll just get out of the way. The picture will tell the story. football and you love storybook endings, write the name Eric Robinson at the top of the page. Come on, D. No gain on the play, third and 10. We said a moment ago the play of the game, it just reappeared. And the clock is moving, 2.36 and running down. And they are getting in field goal range for Perez. Right now it would be a 45 yard kick, so they're right at his limit. 226, Harvey audibilizing. Straight back drop, looking for the right side. Pass intercepted. He stands six foot one, weighs 210 pounds, a sophomore out of Foothill High School. Ward Van Peltz, the man of the hour right now at 219. Robinson, I formation, double wide outs, tight end to the left side. Johnny Mountain right up the middle, he's got a big hole at the 35, breaks the tackle at the 25, at the 20, 15 yard line. <laughs> 31 yard gain, 38 seconds remaining, Hornets on the move. Johnny Mountain, no, Robinson keeps it. He's at the 15 to the 10, down to the five yard line. Touchdown Hornets! Here's the same guy who was wheeled off on a car. We were worried that he was gonna be lost for the season. And here's a guy who could have single-handedly brought the Hornets back to a victory. There's the score, and what a run by Robinson as he just went around left end, kept going. 
And now the Hornets are going to try going up by seven. Eric Lang on to attempt the extra point after the 17 yard touchdown by Eric Robinson. Snap is back, the ball is down, the kick is up and it's good. With 29 seconds remaining in the ball game, it's now Fullerton 31, El Camino 24. Nine minutes and one second ago, they took Eric Robinson off the field on a wheelchair. Nine minutes and one second later, he scores on a 17-yard run, and the Hornets, ranked number two in the nation, have staged one of the great comebacks in the history of the school. Fulton College scored 22 points in the final 536 of the game to record a miracle 31-24 win over El Camino. After the great comeback win against El Camino, it was time for the opposition to come back against the Hornets. Trailing 29-17 with 521 remaining in the game, Saddleback College drew within five points on a 32-yard touchdown pass. The Gauchos then scored the winning TD with 31 seconds left, and the joy of a great comeback win a week ago turned to the hurt of losing games seemingly in hand. Game number seven of the 1990 football season found Fullerton College 5-1 at Golden West College, where the Rustlers were also 5-1. For the third consecutive week, a game the Hornets were involved in was decided in the final minute. Quarterback Eric Robinson found Don Norris open for a six-yard scoring pass and at Eric Lang's PAT, and the Hornets had done it again 24-23 over Golden West. Game number eight found the Orange Coast College Pirates 5-2 against Fullerton College 6-1. The Hornets would tie the game at 7-7 on a 12-yard touchdown pass from Eric Robinson to David Owens. The Hornets would go up 14-7 on a 12-yard touchdown pass from Eric Robinson to tight end Rob Coons. on top 21-14. Lawrence Hatch of Orange Coast returned the kickoff 91 yards for a touchdown. That change of events didn't sit well with Hal Sherbeck, who was looking to roll a seven with Kevin Thomas. But Sherbeck would be happy with the catch, the catch of the 1990 season. We'll let Scott Galetti and Lon Brunk describe the action. Strain, green on the near side, Owens on the far side. The receiver, single setback. Third down and nine, Robinson back to pass, down the right side for Strain, and a one-handed catch. He is down the middle, 40, 35-30. Down the right side of the 20 to the 10, touchdown! That may be the single best effort I have seen in football in a long, long time. This is worth a second look. Again, uh, Robinson just puts the ball up. Now look at Strain, single-handed. You don't think this is tough. You've, you're going to have somebody blasting you. Look, he goes up and gets it. Now, how does he avoid the tackle here? Instead of wrapping up, the pirate defender tries to take his legs out. Here's another shot. They don't wrap him up. He stumbles around, regains his balance, gets to the outside. This, this pirate defender should have had him. Little bit of speed here to the flag, six. The incredible 76-yard one-handed catch by Lee Strain would tie the score at 35-35, but Orange Coast would score the final 10 points of the game and hand Fullerton her second loss of the season, 45-35. Game number nine was homecoming for the Hornets against their bitter rival from Santa Ana, the Rancho Santiago College Don. The Fullerton College defense put a stranglehold on All-American running back Exus Creighton of Rancho Santiago, 
holding the All-American to 29 yards and 20 carries. With the Hornets trailing 6-3, Coy Collins put the Hornets ahead on a 53-yard punt return. The Hornets would go up 17-6 on a 44-yard touchdown run by Eric Robinson. After having a 17-14 lead at half, Coy Collins made a 24-14 on a five-yard touchdown scamper. The Hornet defense once again rose to the occasion as Toby Howe sacks Don quarterback Rich Fanny on a fourth down play. The Hornets would force a Don turnover as Marcus Royster would strip the ball and Jeff Bezanese recovers at the Rancho Santiago 25. On the following play, Eric Robinson would hit Terrence Green on a 25-yard touchdown pass and put the game away 37-14. Even freshman nose guard Sean Donahue got into the action as he intercepted a rich fanny pass and ran it down the right sideline near the goal line. Hornets would give Hal Sherbick his 233rd win of his career with a 44-22 win over Rancho Santiago. And although the Hornets would lose their finale in Riverside 29-14, the 1990 Hornets had a year to be proud of. Twelve Hornets from the 7-3 club would be selected to the all-conference squad. The Hornet football team continued to live up to their slogan in 1990, Hornet football, a winning tradition.